Dallas at that. That smoke, as we said earlier, is from the uh, flares that are set out by the spacecraft itself upon landing to mark its location. And they're not needed uh, uh, on this flight. They were close enough in 12 miles from their predicted impact point, and the helicopters were there immediately, saw them with no difficulty. Besides, the parachute remained afloat, and uh, as far as we know, it's still afloat, uh, still attached to the Gemini 6. Although the uh, flotation collar has now been attached as well, the uh, swimmers are plugged in, as uh, has been reported, uh, with the spacecraft and in communication, talking to Shira and to Stafford. Uh, they're riding it out, waiting for the WASP to come alongside. I wouldn't want to be held to uh, this fact, but uh, I believe by just some fast calculation, the WASP should be about two miles off. Uh, now, around uh, 3,000 yards. Uh, Mike Wallace has a frogman uh, with him, as a matter of fact, and he can really give us a, a frogman's eye view of what's happening right now. It's our old friend, Lieutenant Junior Grade Marty Every of Notre Dame University, who was with us last time around, Walter. He was the uh, officer in charge of the swim team that recovered for McDivitt and White, as you remember. He has in his hand here that, uh, that orange telephone that they plugged into the to the side of the uh, spacecraft, the Gemini 7, so that indeed they can talk in, the swimmers can. Marty, the, uh, uh, it seems to be a tremendous amount of smoke if it's just coming from the spacecraft. There's a, the, the, the surface of the water from maybe 100 yards along seems to have smoke over it. Oh, well, Mr. Wallace, uh, I believe that uh, these flares are thrown out by the search aircraft uh, when they spot this, and it, these flares give the uh, rescue aircraft a, a place to shoot for if they can't actually see the spacecraft uh, that smoke is uh, coming from those flares the uh, green dye is what comes out of the spacecraft itself I see now you people stay when I say you people the, the uh, frogmen stay right with the spacecraft under all circumstances even if the astronauts have been taken out and flown by helicopter back aboard the carrier you people stay right with it yes that's correct uh, we close the doors to the thing if they're left open, seal it if possible, and stay with the raft which is attached to the collar. The, on what part of the carrier will the spacecraft be hoisted aboard by this crane? Well, on our shot it was uh, one of the hangar decks. We came right below it. And uh, on this they have a, uh, a rig of pulleys, etc., cetera, to, uh, that hooks especially right onto the rings of this craft. The uh, captain will pull the aircraft carrier right alongside, and uh, we'll hook into this. And when we hook, in, when they hook in, and start to haul in, is when we leave the leave the raft. I understand that Dennis Bowman, who is the lead swimmer on this uh, M1 team, has another reason to be particularly happy this week. Not just the recovery of Gemini Six, but something else. Yes, that's true. Uh, his wife just last week gave uh, birth to a nine-pound, nine-ounce uh, little boy which uh, he has yet to see, so I imagine he'll be... Wasn't that supposed to happen to one of the astronauts too, Walter? Yeah, Jim uh, Lovell, uh, his wife, is expecting any moment now. I uh, thought that the birth might come even as Lovell is circuiting uh, the Earth, and it might still. He's due for another 48 hours up there, and anything could happen. Uh, well, that would be a Gemini operation then. There are going to be a lot of reasons for cigars to break out around Houston and at uh, Navy centers uh, everywhere. Also, uh, besides the boys getting promotions out there among that uh, frog team, uh, of course, the astronauts get promotions, uh, automatic promotions. Stafford uh, went up as an Air Force major. He comes back as a lieutenant colonel. Uh, Shira does not get promoted. Uh, he has gone as high as uh, you can go in that automatic promotion system by space flights to Navy captain, uh, equivalent to uh, Army or Air Force colonel, and uh, he stays at uh, that rate now. And Marty Look how Avery. close uh, we can see this, Mike. Isn't this a fantastic view we're getting from the, uh, from the television cameras aboard the WASP being relayed to us by the early bird satellite on that long lens. We're being able to pick out the tail now of the uh, Gemini 6. We'll explain again, if anybody's missed it, that this uh, smoke you see is from the flares, uh, as Senator Everly points out, dropped by the spacecraft, uh, I mean, dropped by the recovery uh, uh, airplanes, not, and the helicopters, not the spacecraft itself. 
The spacecraft carries flares in case it is out of touch and needs to identify its location. And Everly corrects me on that. These flares, he believes, dropped by the helicopters and seems highly likely. Uh, there's the picture now, and not on the long lens. Uh, and even that, uh, we're getting now a good clear picture. The WASP must be indeed closing. There's the long lens picture again. Uh, Shira and Stafford are buttoned up inside the spacecraft. They have not opened the hatches. Uh, the procedure when being lifted aboard is to not open the hatches, to stay buttoned up. It's like they're standing on it's probably very warm inside the uh, spacecraft uh, right now, something over 100 degrees and not particularly comfortable. Although there is very little wave activity, it doesn't take very much for that spacecraft to do a lot of bobbing around. It's not a very seaworthy device. It floats, and that's about all. Lieutenant Every says, Walter, that it looks as though a couple of the swimmers are standing on the flotation collar, staying right with the spacecraft at this moment. I, uh, that, uh, yeah, that's good identification. I suppose that's what it is. I didn't know what those little nodes were out there. Those are some, those are two of the swimmers, I guess. The wasp uh, closing the last we heard at now around 25 knots. She got up to flank speed. That is her highest speed of 32 knots a short while ago. picture uh, is being enlarged for you exclusively on CBS, uh, this uh, tight shot we see here now. It's, uh, we can show you what the uh, pool picture, all of the television uh, cameras are getting. Uh, this is the picture. We take that small portion and by our special CBS process can enlarge it for you like that. That's, what, that's the equivalent of our long lens. Zarathustra. Recovery should be coming now and uh, it's estimated about five minutes uh, when the wasp gets up there a little bit uh, closer. Uh, the actual recovery operation gets underway aboard the wasp itself. As we have said, Shira and Stafford after that highly successful flight uh, will ride their spacecraft back aboard the Wasp, the first time this had been done in the Gemini program. Shira did it in Mercury, and so did Cooper in Mercury. The pickup should begin now, I'm told, not five, but 15 or 20 minutes. Apparently, the uh, Wasp has slowed down a little bit. Uh, it's going to, it's still now two and a half miles away, the latest reading from Paul Haney at Mission Control. Lieutenant Avery has a thought about what may be going on out there, uh, Walter. Right. Well, uh, the way it looks now, the, when the spacecraft comes down, they can't open these doors, even if they elect to uh, remain in the craft. And a uh, flexible shield is pulled up over this uh, door, but still allows ventilation. So uh, why they may be on the craft now is they'll probably reclose these doors if this has happened when they are lifted aboard. In other words, they let a little fresh sea air into the uh, spacecraft, and then just before they it aboard, they reclose the hatches. For safety purposes, yes, sir. Of course, this is a very calm sea, or a comparatively calm sea, so it's probably not quite the seasick machine that it's been suggested that perhaps it can be on occasion. Yes, they, they said uh, three foot swells, I believe, which is ideal conditions to put this uh, flotation collar on. It gives you enough to. Capsule is bouncing around a little bit. Though. You know, I think Mike, it was Shira that was said, I, I wouldn't swear to this, it may have been Gordo Cooper, who said that thing would bob around in a bathtub. <laughs> how long, Lieutenant Avery, have the men aboard the Wasp been embarked on this particular cruise? It's how long since they've seen land? Well, they left uh, approximately uh, six days before the blast off. So they've been out there myself. Uh, be about Close to 20 days when the next one is recovered, and another four or five days to get back in to for the carrier. So it's a it's a pretty good cruise they're making out there now. But everybody will be home for Christmas, hopefully. I hope so. It's another textbook flight for 
this 42-year-old New Jersey native, Oradell, New Jersey was his hometown. Wally Shira, his Gemini, his Mercury flight, Sigma 7, was absolutely perfect, right on the mark on every part of it. And he landed four and a half miles from the Kearsarge out in the Pacific. And now his Gemini 6 flight, it lifted off perfectly after those two great disappointments back October 25th and today. Uh, and uh, and the, the flight uh, then that was scrubbed on the pad after ignition of the engines. Dallas Townsend advises us from the WASP that one of the hatches does seem to be open. It would be the hatch over Shira. As uh, Lieutenant Everly told us, uh, that may be what indeed is going on, reclosing the hatch before being lifted aboard. It's only uh, the only the uh, command pilot's hatch that is open. The it's the one that is right on top as the spacecraft bobs there. Let's recount very quickly for anybody who came in late. And if you did, I pity you because this has been an exciting morning. Uh, the recovery of uh, Gemini 6 is now taking place some 750 miles east of uh, the lower coast of Florida, east of Miami, roughly. The aircraft carrier WASP, with our television cameras relaying a picture through early bird to us, is uh, getting the is closing in on the spacecraft, which we see in our screen. The helicopters have been overhead since splashdown. Uh, oh, almost 45 minutes ago. The flotation collar has been attached. We can see the frogmen uh, perched on the edge of the spacecraft on the flotation collar. We've been told that the hatch over Shira is uh, open, or has been at any rate. Uh, then the retrofire and return as the entire flight of Gemini 6 has been perfect. We expect to have the pilots back aboard the aircraft carrier WASP in about another uh, 10 minutes. Let's go now to Dallas Townsend aboard the WASP. WASP. And by Captain Joseph Berryman, who is Chief of Staff to Admiral Leonard. Then after uh, very few greetings, uh, these uh, ceremonies don't take long, they'll be taken down below to sick bay where they will undergo medical examinations. In the case of Shira and Stafford, the medical examination will be much more cursory than it has been in previous uh, physical medical examinations of this type. The reason being that the assumption is that uh, both of them are in good condition and all they'll do is check their heart, pulse rate, eyes, ears, uh, nose and throat and all those other uh, ingredients that go to make up a physical examination. The uh, examination of uh, the GT-7 astronauts will be far more detailed and complex because after all they will have been up there two weeks by the time they come down. Tell us that uh, flight of GT-7 is primarily, as you know, a medical flight uh, designed to determine uh, how much man can take in space in cramped position and in a weightless state. Whereas, of course, GT-6 was the rendezvous flight and uh, the astronauts uh, being uh, made ready to come aboard this carrier will be checked to see, of course, that uh, they came through their uh, flight in, in relatively good condition. We have word, of course, that the hatch, as you said, is open, but that it will be closed prior to uh, uh, the carriers coming alongside. The hatch open, no doubt, to let some of this very fresh southwest Atlantic air into that spacecraft. Uh, its air conditioning system, its cooling system, not operating once it's in the water. Yes, we have heard also that uh, SWIM-2, uh, the recovery helicopter, is bringing the doctor back aboard. That was Dr. Carpentier. Uh, Dr. Carpentier, who was uh, the assistant to, to uh, Dr. Howard Minners, the NASA recovery physician, flew out there in order to uh, render any assistance that might be needed, any uh, initial assistance. But he was not needed, so Dr. Carpentier is coming back on board the carrier. They will be greeted, of course, by Dr. Carpentier and also by Dr. Minners and a large array of uh, outstanding other medical talent, both civilian and military. Some of the uh, most highly qualified specialists in the Navy, in the Air Force, and in private life are out here on board the carrier ready to examine the astronauts and make sure that they are in tip-top shape, which everything indicates that they are indeed.